All right. Five, four, three, two, one. One. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It is Monday night for us. Tuesday morning for you guys. Tuesday morning for you guys. Boy, do we have an adventure to talk about. Yeah, we do. Really miss you guys, though, a lot. Miss yeah. everybody at the home church, and we miss everybody on here. I know I, I definitely do, and I know you do, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, to catch you up to speed, obviously, most of you already know that Sharon was in the hospital. She contracted COVID while in there. You guys should know that. Me being with you, I contracted COVID. Abraham also. Yeah, my alien son, Matthew, didn't. <laughs> yeah, so... He came back uh, negative and stayed negative throughout the whole process. So we were put in isolation until yesterday. Yeah. So today was our first unisolation day, right? So a few misunderstandings I had was that the isolation days are days because when you get positive, they call you by the COVID, California COVID team. Yeah. And uh, they tell you how many days till you can be isolated you have to be isolated to in order to keep everyone safe well those are, those are the days we're not um that we are a period of days that we're actually not contagious no those are the days we are contagious oh sorry the days yeah. we are <laughs> contagious i know sorry yeah I'm so those are the it. days that we're contagious that's why we need to be isolated my mistake was thinking that that means those are the days that that you deal with COVID, you know, whatever symptoms you're going to feel, and then it goes away. Well, what he didn't anticipate was that even though the symptoms hit you during the time you're contagious, your body feels the effect of it after. Yeah, really bad. So yesterday was our last day, and... Well, mine was Saturday, yours was yeah. Sunday. Problem was... <coughs> we couldn't breathe. Sharon couldn't speak. She, If she spoke, she would start gasping. Um, it was really scary, guys. Yeah, it got really bad um, for me as of Friday. Yeah. On Friday, it got really, really bad. Um, and then on Saturday, it got really, really worse. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday... So then yesterday I told her, I said, <coughs> I said, you've been really bad, like gasping. <clears throat> if, if she would speak or get up to use the restroom, that's all it took. She'd be gasping for air, like, <coughs> <coughs> like a fish out of water. So yesterday I said, you need to tell me right now is if, if this is getting better. Or if it's getting worse. I said, because here's the thing. You can't play around with your lungs. If, if this, things get worse, then you, you, you could very well be getting pneumonia. Because obviously, nobody wants to go into the hospital. <coughs> <coughs> nobody wants to go into the hospital with COVID. Because you go in the hospital, people don't leave. And, and you know, so that's um, something that's always on your mind. You know, and we try protecting our lungs the whole time. You guys know everything we've said in the videos. Yeah. So we thought maybe <laughs> it'll get better. Yeah. Because our taste was coming back. Our smell was coming back. You know, my body was hurting a little bit less. Because that was my main symptom was my body hurting. Yeah. And uh, so then she said it's not getting better. And I know she didn't want to go to the hospital. I, I know she didn't. But <coughs> <coughs> what I finally decided to tell her was that I was having trouble breathing. Now, I wasn't gasping like you, but I, I was having trouble. So I called the hospital. Because remember that thing I showed you guys, the oxygen thing? 
I told the lady at the hospital, I said, I don't know if we're supposed to go in or not. I told her the number. And she goes, you got to come right now. Yeah. Mine had went down to um, 82. Yeah. And he, she told him, you need to bring her right away. So we, uh, we went to the hospital and we both, we both checked ourselves. <coughs> <coughs> I was doing something right now, guys, so that's why I'm a little out of breath right now. Uh, but um, we both checked ourselves in. And then, uh, man, at first they had us together. They said they were going to keep us together. Because the last thing I wanted to do was to be separated from her. Because you go in the hospital and you never come out, right? Yeah. At first they, they pulled me separate from you. They took my blood. They did an EKG. Well, the triage. Yeah, they triaged me separately from you, and they took my blood immediately, and they they did an EKG on me and everything. And then they brought me back out with you, and they called us back in together, and they and kept they said us they're going to keep us together. Mm -hmm. So then they did her X-ray of her lungs, <coughs> X-ray of her lungs, and um, my thirty minutes later. Yeah. They come back and they said, you know, we need to, the doctor wants to keep her in for observation. Um, he wants to observe you closely, more closely. Yeah, so they... Monitor they you or something. Monitor me and they they pulled me separately from him. And, and they took her from me like that, man. And I'm just like, I just, I look like a deer in headlights, you know, and I'm freaking out. And my heart just dropped and... You know, they pulled me to the back and they told me that my blood work um, showed that I had uh, some form of blood clotting. And um, they just, you know, immediately started um, putting an IV in me and, and they started, you know, bringing all kinds of medications out and that they needed to send me to a CAT scan immediately. Um, and so, you know, started doing more blood work and everything. I needed to make sure to see where the blood clotting was coming from and stuff. So, you know, I was having a really hard time at that point breathing because I got really scared. And, uh, you know, I just, I, 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 I think my heart was just pounding because I can't even imagine how David was feeling out there, you know, because I, I had already told him, you know, don't, don't let them take me. You know, don't let them separate me from you. I don't want to go. You guys know I did not want to leave. Right? I just didn't want to be separated. I didn't even want to be there. <laughs> you know, I was scared. <coughs> so, right. so There I am, once again. So finally, um, while she was gone, they did an uh, x-ray on my chest, too. And then... Um, so I had to wait. I don't know. I don't know how long, guys. Um, I was just so worried about Sharon. I didn't. I didn't. I can't tell you if it was an hour or ten minutes. But then they came back. The nurse came back, and he goes, "Hey, he goes, your your lungs are clear." And I'm like, "I don't even care about my lungs. What about my wife's?" And he goes, "Hers, hers are fine." He goes, um, "For the most part, that's what he said." Yeah. You know, and then I said, so what does that mean? And he goes, I said, and why did they take her? What's happening? What's going on? You know, and he goes, well, first of all, let me tell you, he goes, we're going to release you. We're going to give you a bunch of medication. It's going to help your breathing right away. He goes, and, and the cough. He goes, so you're going to get released. He goes, her, she's most likely going to get released with you. We need to do a scan. A CAT scan. A CAT scan. Um, they're worried about blood clots, so they need to do another CAT scan. And um, most likely she's going to get the same medication as you and maybe something more, you know. So um, you're probably, he goes, because you're still COVID um, positive, once we release you, you got to leave. He goes, but uh, you might want to wait in the parking lot because... You're going to take your wife home, you know, because he must have saw my face because he goes, listen, he goes, 
she's not getting she's not gonna need a respirator. She's not gonna be have to put it on a machine or nothing. Okay. He goes, medication's gonna help her breathing. He goes, so we're more concerned about the blood clots. And I said, okay. So. So at that point, um, they did the CAT scan and everything, um, and it did come back with me having pneumonia. The first stages. Yeah, the first stages of pneumonia. And, um, and they, you know, the, the blood clotting was very minimal. So it is treatable with medication. So immediately they started, you know, administering all the medication that they needed to. They hit you hard with IV? Yeah, and IV they and hit me really, really hard. Um, good I, stuff. Yeah, I started to feel it right away. Um, and uh, with medication for the pneumonia as well, a lot of steroids and uh, medication for infection. Every <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> Antibiotics? Antibiotics, everything. Um, so, and then they sent me home, even with um, the treatments that they, the CPAC, everything, they immediately started giving me everything that I needed to come home with. So I'm on, I'm on some heavier stuff than, than David and some stuff that is um, the same as well. So they gave me two medication. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the first medication... So it's a steroid to open up my lungs. Yeah, and I got that too. Which, which, I'm, <coughs> it was like day and night. Right now, I can breathe good. You know, like I said, honestly, um, I haven't really been coughing all day. Just now, because I was, I was doing maintenance on my computer, guys. I mean, on my computer. <laughs> on my aquarium, my, yeah. my crazy cats decided to chew the airline that goes into the filter. So I had to replace that. And just that little bit will get me out of breath yeah you know so that's why i'm coughing right now but that medication helped me breathe like normal i, I actually um had the my first good night's sleep last night and since this whole thing started i slept like a baby i woke up with no pain in my body i woke up breathing i mean it was it was nice you know um so you have a little more medication because of the antibiotic because of the, the pneumonia. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so guys, I, I will tell you that, um, you know, I, I did feel better after, you know, being hit with, with a lot of the IV medications. I was able to sleep a little bit better, but I think that had to be because I was able to actually finally sleep next to you. <laughs> I felt at peace, but... You know, guys, um, I think you, you felt such a relief the moment that I called you, you know, from the hospital to tell you that, you know, I was coming home with you and you just broke. You know, it broke you and it just, to, to me, it broke my heart to hear you because I've never heard you that way. I'll just sit in the parking lot. I'll just thinking a bunch of stuff <clears throat> you, know? you know the doctor had said that if um if i was if i would he if he would have not brought me if he would have not brought me in when he did i would have ended up in a respirator and that was like my biggest fear is being in a respirator and having that 50 50 chance guys you know and I'm, I'm so stubborn, you know, because I did not want, I would have not came if it wasn't for his breathing because he told me I, I don't feel good either. And that's why I went. <coughs> because I did not want to go to the hospital. So, we're on our way to recovery. We're, like I said, we're out of isolation. Uh, we're no longer contagious. Now we just have to deal with the, what they call the after effects of COVID. Yeah. You know, and uh, so like you have five, they said five days of antibiotics to, to hit your lungs for the pneumonia, right? Yeah. And I'm taking some high dosages of, you know, we're both taking high dosage of steroids at a time. And cough medicine. <clears throat> yeah. The, the cough 
the cocktails. Which I need to take one right now. Because mm-hmm. I'm supposed to take <laughs> one every meal. Yeah. <coughs> and then on top of that, guys, you know, I'm still dealing with my physical therapy, you know, which I've been doing a lot better. Um, I'm walking a lot more. I get, I do get really, really tired. You know, um, you know, I won't lie. You know, I, I have pain still, but you know, I get very, very tired. Um, I'm still going to have to use the walker and take it with me at places because, you know, after so long of walking at times I, I have to stop. Um, a lot of the coughing and everything hurts the area where the mesh is where I have the brain surgery. I feel a lot of pressure. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of little obstacles for me from, you know, from other things on top of that. Um, I got to go through the physical therapy for the next, um, five weeks. Um, I'll be doing physical therapy still. So, but I'm, I'm getting there guys. I'm definitely getting there. So, um, I just want to continue thanking everybody that has continued to pray. Um, and thank you to everybody that has continued to just be there, be that support. I just greatly appreciate you guys so much for all your help and all your support. Um, brother Adam, thank you for sending you know, that, that machine, you know, it really, really helped. And Leanna for, for sending the, um, the abuteral too, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that helped so much, you know, for the time when I needed it. So many people helped, even with prayers, some financially, you know, and Alfonso bringing us food, you know, some (laughs) some people bless us with food, groceries. I mean, just Just, all the way around. Yes. But even just, even just the messages, even the text, the encouragement, you know, so much encouragement. And, um, but you know, it's the it's, girls stepping in to do worship. You know, I yeah. appreciate you ladies, um, stepping in just to do worship. Everybody that has stepped in to hold down the home, you know, and, and to hold down the house over there and, and just being there and just being consistent in com- the commitments. And cause we know the sacrifice that it takes to hold down the fort over there. Thank you guys so much for, for doing that. We see it. We see it all the way around. And, and we're just so graciously, you know, appreciative for everything that you guys do. You guys do it unto the Lord. You guys do it unto the Lord with excellence. And we appreciate you so much for that. Amen. So, like I said, we're, I'm not ready to do a devotional. As you can tell, I'm, I'll start coughing. You know, um, but we did want to do an update. Um, Wednesday Bible study will still not be at the church. We just still need a few more days. Um, I'm actually really considering um, just leaving the house for a couple days and just doing our final two days, taking our medication and resting. Uh, So you might see a devotional or even the Bible study live from wherever we're at yeah we're gonna disinfect the the house guys um you know the the beautiful thing is that our boys are they're young and they're strong and you know they have energy <laughs> even even abraham you know he's he's a little he's a little beat up you know um but not as bad as us but he didn't realize till today how yeah, limited today his... we had to trim something in the front that was a branch was hitting my car and him just trimming that, he was out of breath. Like Yeah, yeah, just today he finally felt it. But, you know, he's been a little bit stronger than us. But um, he did feel it today. And Matthew, he's been stronger, so he's really going to help us disinfect the house as much as um, we can. Um, and we're just going to take off for two days, guys. Um, yeah, you we, know, we need to get out of here yeah. and let the house disinfect. And And honestly... Sharon went through a hospital of nine days, and then this. Just, it has been insane, guys, and I just want to get her out of here. Um, I'm going to take this equipment, and we're probably going to have Bible study wherever I'm at, because yeah. I don't want to not do Bible study, but it's not going to be at the church. Um, 
But our whole plan is to get through these next four days, four more days of antibiotics and medicine so we can be there Sunday. Yeah. That's our plan. Yeah. Mother's Day is going to be very, very special, guys. Um, I know that um, I have the women stepping in. I was I was planning to preach on Mother's Day, um, but I don't, I can't, guys. I don't have the... Um, the energy or the stamina to be able to stand up long or to be able to do it so but I do have a very special surprise we are going to have a different women that are going to be preaching on Saturday it's going to I mean on Sunday it's going to be very special our women are going to be holding service on Sunday and it's going to be very very special um, a special Mother's Day so I'm going to ask that you guys just join us um, Join us on Mother's Day. Um, I, I can't wait for, for Mother's Day. And I know that we're going to be in Arizona, um, Phoenix, Arizona, for uh, 23rd. the 23rd of May as well. There's just so many things planned, guys. And I think this is why we're just so anxious to get better and to take it easy so that we can be able to fulfill these days and be able to be there um, and that's another reason why I want to go away for two days because when you're at home, there's always things to do at home yeah. and, and we get little bursts where we do feel good and then we do those things like me doing the main, <coughs> 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 we get these little bursts of energies and then I think I'm fine and I start messing with the aquarium and now look, it's hard for me to breathe and, yeah. and so that's why I'm just like, you know what, we need to get away take our medication, and let our bodies recover. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying we're going out of town to go do things. I'm literally going to just do nothing, you know, and I'm really looking forward to that. So we wanted, and I do want to end it with the verse, actually, um, because here's the thing that I told Sharon. <laughs> um, I told her today, I said, you know, with you going in the hospital and the enemy knowing Knowing that, of course, I wasn't going to leave her in the hospital, that I was going to be there. The enemy wanted to take us out. The enemy wanted to take us out, man, and break our spirit. That's exactly. Because with her going to the hospital and her being paralyzed and, and what that did to me, and then to get hit with COVID, and then we, you know... And, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't really care what the enemy had planned. You know why? Because of this. I'll tell you right now. I guess I should have had this ready, but I don't. Give me a second. That's okay. They don't mind waiting a second, you guys. Here it is. Genesis 50. Twenty. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Right there. That when Joseph was talking to his brothers. What the enemy meant for evil, God's always going to turn it to good. Salvation's going to come from this. Testimony's going to come from this. Inner strength is going to come from this. Something is going to come from this because that's what God does. And that's why we, every time we stumble, every time we get tripped up, every time things happen, because life happens. I've always said that. I never said life doesn't happen. Yeah. I've never painted a, a pretty picture of Christianity for you that everything's going to be healthy and everything's going to be great. You know, it's so fitting that, we, that, you, that you use that because I always say it on the four Ps. You know, for me, the story of Joseph is so significant in my life because I always said he was persecuted, persevered, and was positioned for God's purpose. And I always say that. That's why that story is so powerful and so, for me, it's so relevant. 
And I always said those four Ps just always meant when God gave me the four Ps, that's what it was for. Because he was persecuted and then persevered through so much. And he was positioned even in the secular. And it was all for God's purpose. Yeah. And it always ended with that, with that, with that verse there. It was for God's purpose. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So we'll leave you with those four Ps, guys. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I think that sometimes we don't need to, we don't need to see everything out is because we don't have to figure God out. Yeah. We just, that's what it means to have faith in God is you trust him. I just trust him in the process. Yeah. I don't know, you know, why we went through this. I, I don't know. And it's not for me to question because Christianity doesn't mean you don't go through things. Um, but I will say that the, some possibilities, I think um, it'll strengthen people, many of you, to see us go through this. Because a lot of times people aren't good examples. You, you see people that you believe are strong in the Lord and they have a little bit of a hiccup in life and they fall apart. And you're just like, what does it look like when somebody doesn't fall apart? Yeah. What if, that, what if it helps in that way? What if this helped in that way? What if this is the strengthening that we needed as a marriage? Yeah. Because the Bible says, you know, in the marriage vows, for better, for worse, through sickness and through health. You know, and it's, there's nothing like sickness that's going to bring you closer yeah. to really see where you stand with your spouse, to see where you stand yourself with your spouse and for your spouse to see where you stand with them. So there's so many things all the way around that I already know that whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it for good. Yeah. You know, so it's like there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of good things that no matter what, no matter what, no matter what Satan throws or life throws, God is always going to flip it around where we're going to benefit from it. You know, and, and that's exactly, even scripture says that, that there wouldn't have been a resurrection without him being buried. Yeah. Some, he had to die. He, if something horrible had to happen in order for something good to grow. Yeah, and I think also it, it did something for even the kids, you know, for my boys, you know. I think for them to learn a new appreciation, you know, I think sometimes it, it, it almost brings like a, like this, them going through, it, it gives them a new appreciation and a new love for, for, for their parents, you know, like to go through something like this together because they, they sometimes see things and they never think that something can even happen, you know? Yeah. And, and for, for them to go through this with us, it, it, it shows them to appreciate, it shows them to, to love because something can be taken away so quickly. You know, and I think we've learned to become stronger as a family together. But even our other kids, you know. All of them. Sometimes, you know, my, my kids, <clears throat> they have their lives and stuff. And sometimes I get to where I feel like they don't, like they forget about me. When they found out this happened yesterday, I mean, they, they've been worried ever since. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I needed that. I needed that as a dad. Yeah. That I'm like, okay, they do care. Yeah. You know, Bobo does care. He yeah. keeps messaging, you know, he keeps messaging. They, they worry, you know, and I think, like I said, I think it gives them a new appreciation um, for their parents, you know, because they realize, like, you know, we can lose our parents in an instant. We can lose, you know, and, and they just start to realize that. And it just brings us so much closer, guys, you know, as, as a family. And um, I think it's important sometimes that we go through things together as a family. So guys, you know, um, I think all, all around we learned, we learned something so much valuable of how important family and how, how much to love each other while we're mm -hmm. here. Don't wait till something happens. We gotta love each other while we're here and show that love towards one another don't wait till something happens guys you know don't wait till it's too late you know i i 
I just, you know, I just realized so much, you know, things can happen so quickly. And just like we said before we had COVID, we're going to say it again, take care of yourself. Yes. You know, don't give in to, to pressures or peer pressures. If you feel you got to wear a mask, wear a mask. You know, uh, if you feel like you need to stay away from there's a lot of people, don't follow the masses, man. You, you know your health. And you know the health of the people you love. Yeah. And that's the only thing that should matter. So take care of yourself. One thing I have learned that the doctor's stress yesterday, my daughter who's a nurse is stressed all this time, your daughter all this time, is, is um, vitamins. Yes. Vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. Like to make sure your vitamins, that's the, they say that's the best way. Mm-hmm. Go outside. And it doesn't, it, here's the thing though. It doesn't prevent you from getting it. But boy, once you get it, trust me, how your body is and your vitamins is going to determine the symptoms you're going to get and how severe. Yeah. Go outside, sit in the sun, get that natural vitamin D, get, get that air, you know, take a walk. Um, it's so, so important, guys. So even, even part of the, the medication they gave me yesterday, besides the, the steroid and all that stuff, was vitamin D. Zinc and zinc vitamin C. And vitamin C. This is yeah. at the hospital. Like, this, like, you got to take this before we release you. You know, so, um, but yeah. yeah, we got all our prescriptions, guys. And, um, but like I said, um, we'll be there, you know, God willing, Sunday. But we're going to take a few more days. Wednesday Bible study will be online still. And um, that's it, you know. Um, hopefully we'll you leave a comment and that way we can read them in the morning like we always do yes. so is that it yeah we love you guys we really do miss you guys um and i'm i'm just glad that i'm able to be on here to to say hello to you guys and just to you know just to show my face and say hello and that we love you okay All bye right. guys bye